Welcome to the Spirit Sessions podcast. I'm your guide, Katie Silcox, bringing you your weekly self-love soundbite. Join us where I'll help you find your true spiritual home, where every single aspect of you is holy ground. Hi everyone, Katie here. This podcast is intended to inspire you, educate you, and most importantly, support you on your journey towards knowing who you really are, that inner self, that inner teacher. I am not a psychologist or a medical doctor and do not offer professional health or medical advice on this podcast. If you are suffering from any kind of psychological or medical issue, please do the right thing and seek help from your qualified health professional. Hello, dear listener. It's Katie here, and I just want to thank you for being a listener. And I am glad that that this content can support you and serve you. I want to talk about something today that's really near and dear to my heart and hopefully will resonate with you. And um, and that's something that I'm calling the Susan Powder effect. <laughs> um, I'm going to age and date myself, but I love that. And that is that I'm, quote, an elder millennial. Some of you listeners are elder millennials. We were born on the cusp of Gen X and millennials and we are um, unique because we grew up in an era and a time where there was not internet and um, that I feel actually really, really grateful for. Um, I I just don't know how it would be to be a young girl in her early teens and and her um, tweens yeah, and even into the 20s and 30s and to grow up on Instagram and to grow up on TikTok and to have the internet be just like completely woven into the fabric of our life. And so if any of you out there listening are teenage girls, I want you to know I got you. I've got your back. I'm praying for you. I'm sending you all my love and I freaking respect you because you're living in a in an interesting time as they say in Chinese philosophy an interesting time is considered like a curse on some people and and yet also really the way that we become resilient and in order to know fearlessness you have to know fear and in order to know safety and security you have to know insecurity and feeling insecure about yourself and in order to love your body and your incarnation and the way you look and your gifts and your talents you have to know not loving your body and not liking the way you look and and so I just if you're a teenager out there listening I just want you to know I dedicate this whole episode to you and if you're a mom and you have a teenage daughter and she's open to listening to someone that's not her mom (laughs) Maybe you can hand this over to her. Um, Okay, so I said at the beginning of the show that this is about the Susan Powder effect, and I'm going to get to what that is. Some of you are too young to know who that is. Um, By the way, if you hear my dog barking, I apologize. I I am also apologizing for the quality of the sound of this podcast. I literally record this on my iPhone uh, in my kitchen, so if my dog starts freaking out, Uh, I'll do my best to pause it, but, um, okay. Susan powder. If you're out there, Susan powder listening, I want you to know, I love you. Um, no shade at all, but you were, you were a big part of my, my, well, I wouldn't say a big part. You were, yeah, I would. You're, you hang currently Susan powder, like a, like an archetype in my psyche. Um, you live in my psyche and I'm, I'm grateful for you because 
the Susan Powder effect is real. And like everything in Tantra, what we're attempting to do is not label things as good or bad. We have an internal obsession in our culture with othering people and labeling them good or bad. So I want to start off the show on the Susan Powder effect by saying we're not labeling this effect as good or bad. It's a superpower. And if you go back and look at some of Susan Powder's videos, like from, I guess it's like the late. 80s or early 90s probably 90s she's a powerhouse that woman has shakti she's got power and I remember just being completely enthralled with her story that's how I would put it she gave me hope I wanted to be like Susan Powder because Susan Powder had this freaking before and after picture I'm going to go try to find it after I record this and put the link in the show notes. And she was um, quite overweight. And then she was quite ripped as hell. And then, you know, the, the, the change, right? She shaved her head and she had this sort of what she became famous for was her gregarious nature, her confidence and her bald head that she shaved and um, dyed bright white. Um, you could not even tell the difference. You could not tell that this was the same person. And we can bow before Susan Powder, the person, and say thank you. But really, I'm not talking about her. I'm talking about the Susan Powder effect. What is this? We could give it another name, but I like this name, and it makes me giggle, and you know, it takes me back to a time in my life. And what it is, is it the Susan Powder effect is the seduction of Project You. Project Katie Silcox, Project Emily, Project Janice, Project Vera, Project Sarah, Project Liz. You can fill in your name. And I want you to take a moment and just think about if you are doing some kind of Project You, Project Katie. We don't have to demonize it. We want to track it. We want to see it. And what Project U says is that you have an old version of yourself and you have a potential new version of yourself. And we have to really bow before that energy. That is, that's an energy, right? And just like in India during COVID, they created shrines all over India for the goddess COVID. We can do the same thing with this, right? We want to, we want to give project you her space we want to put her in the right place we want to honor the fact that that there's actually divinity in that energy and if we take it to the nth degree we can see that there's always a longing always a desire to become and that's healthy right we're here on planet earth to evolve and to move from ignorance to wisdom cool Let's bow, let's honor that, right? That's also the force that that is behind the hero's journey and the and, and the heroine's journey and the even the longing to awaken that the Buddha had um is project you. But it becomes unhelpful very fast, really fast, sometimes instantly. Sometimes it becomes unhelpful in the exact moment it starts because its origin point is not the deeper longing of your heart, which is for all of us to know who we really are. What is it when it gets twisted and woven into some lie, to some misunderstanding? And that's when it becomes insidious, harmful, painful, and broken. Project U, the Susan Powder effect, will never take us to where we want to go, even if we get Susan's six-pack abs and biceps, which I am envious of. Um, but it won't take us where we want to go. And, you know, Susan, if you're out there listening, maybe you can write me um, 
info at theshaktischool.com because I would love to talk to you and just learn more about how your your life went and where you are now because hopefully what she would be able to share with us is that that original journey has led her to such a deeper place and I suspect that's probably true. I know for me, Project Katie, um, when it has its origins in a place of sadness, fear, and worthlessness, I... Um, I didn't get where I wanted to go. So in order to continue this journey of the Susan Powder effect, I want to take you even deeper back into my childhood story. If you've been a listener of the podcast, you know this very well, that I grew up in the 80s in the American Deep South, grow, growing up Southern Baptist, and a very, very nice, you know, typical middle-class American childhood and and I and I remember reading the book Sweet Valley High. Did you guys read that one? Um, so the basic story, and I don't even remember their names, but there was there was a girl, and she wasn't cool a- in school, and then she like got a makeover, and then she wakes up and she gets the hot guy, and she's popular. And I remember reading that. It's probably not the best stories for us to give young women. Because this is this is Project You, right? This is the Susan Powder effect gone wrong. And I want you to take a moment to just consider like where you are in your life right now in terms of the projects that you are um, putting yourself under. And can you make the distinction between the seduction of its false promise and the genuine longing and commitment and aspiration to be healthy or to be in a loving partnership or to have a job you like, or to have a great house, um, to be, you know, those things, super, super normal, super healthy, super valid. But can you go to this more nuanced, subtle place of being able to track the difference between that genuine longing of like I, that we all have that forms the basics of Buddhist meditation, which is may we all be happy. May we all know real happiness. May we all know it. And then the seduction of the project, the glory of who we could become is the glory of your beautiful body or your great partner or your awesome job is the glory unto you. (laughs) <laughs> is the glory unto you. And it's okay. We all have it, guys. But this is our ego. This is the ego. What is the ego? The ego is this false sense that I'm separate. And um, lately I've been tracking the what my mentor Crystal told me is a a great phrase. She said, just watch and track. And again, we all have this. It's not to be sad or bad about it, but it's like the neurotic tendency to want things to go your way for you. And my mind was just blown. And it's like, that's such a great definition of ego. There's nothing wrong with having a sense of who you are as an individual, but this is, this is the ego's insidious stuff, right? It's, the neurotic tendency that we all have to track reality, searching for the evidence and the hope that things are going to go our way for us. Wow. Or for our family, like our little small tribe. Oh, wow. And if you really open your heart to letting that truth in, you'll see that it's everywhere. And so we don't have to, again, feel bad about this. We just have to see it. Whether it's the egoic longing to be um, president and make trillions of dollars, um, or it's it, it can even show up as the more, quote, enlightened neurotic tendency to want to enlighten yourself. Guys, this is this is deep. What I'm saying is that's called spiritual bypassing. That's called actually spiritual materialism. It's like I want to do my meditation practice so I 
can like get the fuck out of here on this earthly plane, right? I want to go to the land of the enlightened ones. (laughs) It's like, oh, wait, that's still ego. And that's why in Buddhism and Christianity as well, it's so beautiful. It's like all about all of us. Bodhisattva energy is the energy that says we all have to wake up because we're interconnected. And so um, this is the opposite of of Project Katie. Project Runway is, (laughs) right? Um, Okay, so let's talk about the projects. What do they look like? Um, I did the, I did the yoga girl project. I did the, um, Ayurveda project, the biohacker project, um, the meditation project. Oh, there's endless permutations, right? Like the, when I was younger, it was like the get skinny project, the get fit project that still shows up for me a lot. Um, it, uh, um, the, the celibacy project, the quit all screens after 8 p.m. project. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm being quite open with you and I hope you're giggling because this is endless, right? And again, it's not, there's nothing bad with that. We should, you know, probably turn off our screens, but it's not the thing. It's the underlying impulse that says that you are not whole and worthy in this moment exactly as you are with your chubby belly with your messed up circadian rhythms because you're on a screen with your whatever it is for you out there dear listener that's the place that when we start from the outcome is radically different The ego, if we go back for a moment, which is the originator of the Susan Powder effect gone wrong, Project Katie, Project You, the root is often just deeply unconscious. It's unseen. The root has a subtext which says there's something wrong with me and I have to do this thing so I can achieve this thing, so I can get this thing, so I can be this thing, so I can feel this thing, so I can know this thing so that I can finally be able to be whatever, loved, known, valuable. But your spirit, your soul knows better. And I believe that our spirit and soul are guiding us through these challenges and vicissitudes to show us that the project has to start from the truth of who we are, which is soul, which can't be improved upon, which can't be bettered. It can't. And can we know that soul? Can we know that heart place? And then can we let that intelligence and that consciousness guide the projects? We've been working with that lately at the Shakti School. I have an amazing staff of women and you know one of the things that we've been working on and and the project ayurveda school which we love right we get to do this amazing thing every year with a group of hundreds of women that starts every january and it goes till the end and we get to be in this project ayurveda and and can we instill in our community this deep philosophy and sense that this is this is the starting point The starting point is that you're already lovable and holy. But it's more than that. Can we we do business? Because we are a business. Can we do that from a place of richness is intrinsic in who we are and what we're offering? And we have an amazing group of women that do coaching calls for us. And can that can that realization of just the value of each, each individual woman who works for us and who approaches the program that they hold this 
teaching within themselves. And it's our job just to give them the tools and the space to be able to see it. So I've given some examples from my life, but I mean, I think about dating or marriage and it's, it's such a potent place for this, right? Can we start from this place of not needing anyone and yet be in the paradox of definitely needing each other in this life? So, um, my teacher told me to imagine this following story and and I think it's really potent and you can take this and, and imagine it for yourself and see if it's helpful. And that is, what if you were living right now in a house made of diamonds and you didn't know it for many reasons, some of them really good reasons. And this house built in diamonds gets covered with um, crappy wood or even worse, siding and these rusty nails. And um, with time, the nails start to rust even more and the wood starts to rot and chip away. And, and then you see that and you're just like horrified by your rusty nails and your shitty wood. And so you go out, as we do, and you buy a big bucket of really, really nice paint. And it's new paint, and you take that paint, or you hire someone else to, and you paint your your house. But over time and the weather, the rusty nails are still underneath, and the wood starts to chip away again. But what's also still there is the the fact that the house is made of diamonds. That's us when we embark upon these big projects to improve ourselves. We don't know that our houses are diamonds. We keep looking for shiner, shinier, better paint to cover our rust, real or perceived rust. And so... If you're listening out there, you can get a ton of Instagram followers. You can do the beauty project. You can fill your lips up with Botox and get, you know, all the right biohacking tools. You can do Ayurveda school. You can get the yoga teacher training or the PhD. Um, You might get the cutest boy in school. You can do all the protocols to get your gut health better and still be working at the level of old rusty nails and rotting wood and paint that's quite superficial. But if this project, you, isn't coming from a place of deep love, you will We will, I will, be propping up the ego's desire to be young and healthy and perfect. There's nothing wrong with those three words. But you may know I wrote a book called Healthy, Happy, Sexy. And I joked the other day that a lot of the time I felt um, sick and uh, sad and single. (laughs) So, um, yeah. I think there's a false idea about any of the people that we follow or that we uh, admire or that we take on as a teacher or guide or a mentor, um, celebrity, that there is this false veneer that... Even someone like Gwyneth Paltrow is like sashaying around her home in her perfect organic cotton gauzy dresses and just being fabulous. And I think it does a great disservice to the truth of people that within every single one of us, the one who feels rejected is hiding. But right behind her is this house of diamonds. And it's that project 
if I were to have one these days, that I'm the most committed to and interested in. I've realized in myself that most of my self-improvement efforts were dual in nature and they still come about this way and I think that it's okay, but I want to see it. And when you can see something, it can be transformed. And so I just encourage you to open your heart and 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 open enough that you could admit the truth that a lot of our self-improvement efforts are either, and this is such a polarization, but it's so interesting, they're ego aggrandizement projects. Like if I just get bigger, better, cooler, prettier, richer, skinnier, wealthier, tanner, whatever it is, right, that... I'll be big. Um, I'll be big. Oh, and at the same time, that goddess of bigness is always sitting beside a goddess of smallness. And so there's self-hatred, self-rejection. And that duality is sitting at the root of a lot of the self-improvement in our culture right now. The biohackers movement, the Ayurveda project, the yoga project, the social justice project, the fill in the blank. How can I get bigger and more powerful and better than everyone? And I don't like myself very much. And it's okay to just hold that polarity in yourself right here, right now and investigate and be radically honest. These are Two sides of the same coin. And so my prayer today, and it's soul work, man. This is grueling work. It's every day. And it's maybe with us till the day we take our last breath. But I am cognizant of and prayerful towards attempting to do my current protocol um, for healing my body and to do the house project, the supplements project, the relationship project, the true beauty project from a place that knows there's nothing that can change who I really am and that that me is love and lovable and loving. Then we can party And we can play and we can work really hard. So I hope this has been supportive of you. Susan Powder, if you're out there, thank you so much for being a part of my journey. You embodied such a spirit of confidence and wildness and courage in your voice. And I am grateful for you. I am also excited to be a part of the continuing evolution of hearts and minds on this planet. And may this podcast be of service to that. If the Diamond House sounds like a place you want to start from with your projects, we are over here at the Shakti School doing something called the Ayurveda School Project. And that's our ethos, our philosophy. We want to give you guys all of the tools that we can and bring you the best experts in the world to do that project from a place of heart. Uh, We start January, but right now it's hot girl summer and we have a big fat deal right now, only till the end of July that gives you some cash off. It's the lowest the price of the school will ever be until the end of 2025. So if you know you want to do the school, you should get in in July because it's hot girl summer discount time and we will get to be with you in January. All right, beautiful person. Have a wonderful day and see you in the classroom. big special thanks to Kevin Carlisle of Goodbye Gemini who wrote this beautiful podcast music and to DJ Juan Pablo Jimenez in southern Spain for mixing it 
and making it magic.